Hi, I'm Mary Lawrence Bevington. Welcome to Energy, Art, and Astrology Communique with Mary B. This is for October 28th to November 4th, 2024. The energy, fields of purple asters in rarefied air, lean into wisdom, positive vibes, and faith, root to reach the sky. Traditionally, asters, which look a bit like stars and often bloom in the early to mid to late fall, especially as our climate warms a bit, are amazing little flowers. They keep for quite a while if you do cut them. And they were traditionally put on graves in part as an afterthought and a wish to have the spirit be closer nearby with them as a memory. And they represent beautiful things like love and wisdom and faith and the like. So bringing in a little art and a perspective on beauty, this is a quote from Salma Hayek. People often say that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And I say that the most liberating thing about beauty is realizing you are the beholder, end quote. So the astrology, today I wanna to focus a little bit on the modalities and if you're not sure what that is, you have certainly heard modalities before if you've looked at astrology at all. Basically, they're the descriptive we give at the beginning of a sign as either cardinal, mutable, or fixed, and they describe the element of the sign. So these modes are the ways each group of signs shows up, responds, and navigates. Throughout this week, our moon moves through Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, all the way to Sagittarius, from mutable earth to mutable fire. On November 1st, we have a new moon. And this is kind of the big event, <laughs> in addition to so many other big events, such as Halloween and the general election in the United States coming up. So on any new moon, the sun and the moon are conjunct. And this one is in Scorpio. It will be a moonless night sky because the moon will be up with the sun during the daylight hours. Again, that always is what's happening on a new moon. And it happens on Friday of TGIF. Thank God it's Friday fame. Friday, Freya Day in Old Norse after the goddess Freya and Venus Day in Vedic astrology. So aspects of note on the new moon day, Mercury and Sagittarius is opposed Uranus and Taurus. Venus and Sagittarius is opposed Jupiter and Gemini. And Mars and Cancer is opposed Pluto and Capricorn. So a lot of oppositions, which we will discuss. You're probably noting that is somewhat of a theme that we'll just tease out a bit. Hey, also, thanks for stopping by. Uh, please like and subscribe. And these are my little husky friends. One of them is actually my sweet husky. And yeah, appreciate you. All right, so we got what's going on day by day here. And it's a pretty interesting week. Again, we've got a lot building up towards this general election, which is the Tuesday after the week that I'm featuring here, because this is a Monday to Monday list. But yeah, we start out with our moon in Virgo and um, that Monday, which is in fact today, the 28th, uh, we do have our entering of Libra, which is happening um, really technically tomorrow, <laughs> the 29th um, in the East Coast areas. And of course in Europe, but if you're west of there, that, that will happen late today. So by Tuesday, October 29th, we do have the moon in Libra. So we're in the fourth quarter. Lunar month is moving forward. And that's an 11-11 day. 
I'm pulling here from nu numerology, which is another love of mine, where a numbers are added up. And from the ancient Pythagoreans, the group that kind of bonded around Pythagoras, we believe, if you're into it, that each number has a vibration. So the 29th, the 2 plus the 9, that day equals 11. And if you add up all the numbers of the day, it's also an 11. 11 is a gateway number. So whenever there's 11 energy, there's often something that happens, a, a threshold, a transformation, something that's typically clear in my experience such as a baby was born on the 11th or the 29th or what have you. And it's really neat when it is also an 11, 11 day. It's kind of double trouble there. Okay. So Wednesday, October 30th, we're still in our fourth quarter here. We've got the moon in Libra. The moon's trying Jupiter that day, which is kind of a lovely emotional energy. So the moon pulls on the tides and it pulls on our inner tides as well, gravitationally. So the waters in our body, the emotions in our body tend to get a bit heightened with moon uh, energy. And because it's in this more of a harmonious relationship, a trine with Jupiter, and that's a angle that's uh, more like a triangle than a square, we have a really lovely um, feeling potentially of expansion inside and sometimes luck. Jupiter has a lucky energy in my experience. Okay, moving forward to Samhain or Halloween. I probably mispronounced that. Um, moon will be in Libra, but then enters Scorpio that day. It's a pretty short transit, only like 32 minutes or so to, to transit. And the moon will be square Pluto that day, which could feel a little tense. So looking again at this relationship, it turns into a hard angle, like a 90 degree, which sometimes can feel like tension with this energy that is plutonic, which is more of a destructive, transformative type energy. November 1st, that's our new moon. And it also happens to be All Saints Day, and we'll be entering a new lunar month. So we go into the first quarter that day. The new moon will be exact in Scorpio at 8.47 a.m. Moving on to November 2nd, we are in the first quarter. Mercury enters Sagittarius that day at 3.18 p.m. And that's the official time, but we, we might feel it a little bit. Um, because a lot of times these transitions have a little bit of energy before them and a little bit after, just like the, the new moon has an orb of influence, just like the full moon as well, three days prior, three days afterwards. Okay, Sunday, November 3rd, the moon will move to Sagittarius that day. This is all Eastern Daylight Time. That'll be in the early morning. It'll arrive at 1.19 a.m. That day, the asteroid Juno enters Scorpio at 3.35 a.m. Mars enters Leo at 11.10 p.m. It's also a big day because daylight savings time ends at 2 a.m. And when statistically the clocks change, we'll fall back. So it'll be kind of sweet. You'll get an extra hour of sleep, which may feel really delightful. And it throws people off. So we've seen statistically more accidents, for example. So accident potential likely does grow. Uh, it will grow at the extremes of the lunation cycle. So the new moon may influence that as well as daylight saving time. So just both hands on the wheel, Keep your eyes to the skyline, nose to the wind, that kind of thing. You don't have to be hyper cautious or live in fear. You just have some sensible risk management, as it were. Okay, Monday, November 4th, moon's in Sagittarius. We are now fully augured into that first quarter. And the moon's conjunct Venus at 6.51 p.m. That's the eve of election day in the United States. I really, really like this beginning 
time of the lunar month. So we've had that new moon on the first, and then we've got the third and the fourth day of the lunar month, November 3rd and 4th. And those days tend to be just fantastically hopeful in a way because we can often see the moon setting that day. So we know the moon has come back primordially, ancestrally. When the moon is new, sometimes we might have a feeling as if the moon has disappeared Maybe it won't come back. It's kind of like what happens with eclipses because long, long ago, our ancestors might have actually thought that they didn't have <laughs> um, some of the tools we have nowadays, though they were wise in many ways, but they might have had a bit of a fright because, hey, it's a black night. Where's the moon? And then you have this third, fourth day of the lunar month, and you can see the crescent setting on the Western horizon. And then it's also waxing towards full and it will get a little bit bigger each day on the right side to our eyes in the Northern hemisphere. And it'll do that until it gets all the way to the full moon. So it's a hopeful feeling. It'll rise about 51 minutes later each night. It's kind of fun because the moon's really something that is a physical astrology and it's uh, of course astronomy as well we can really study sort of the energy patterns and then the physicality the physics of the astronomy as well pretty easily with the the moon uh, hopefully if you don't have a cloud veil every night okay moving forward from here so just a whistle stop at the headlines we've already mentioned we're leading up towards the general election in the United States but this is a little quote from Jake Sullivan, the U.S. National Security Advisor. Right now, they're trying to figure out how to regulate the artificial intelligence, particularly these generative large language models, uh, open AI, uh, and probably the most famous one is chat GPT. So, quote, speed of change in AI, breathtaking, making regulation difficult, end quote. Ooh and that is definitely how AI, even in the last few decades, if you trace it back, it's had an exponential increase. And um, clearly, we have passed a tipping point at this point. Okay, moving forward. Uh, actually, one more note on that that's kind of cool. The Uranus energy is one that is very much like artificial intelligence. And we've been in this interesting Uranus place because that planet has been in Taurus since 2019, which it doesn't really jive with. Speaking of oppositions, Taurus and Uranus are opposite energies in a lot of ways. One's, one's sort of steadfast, Taurus, <laughs> whereas Uranus is anything goes. And that's created something interesting in our field I believe. Okay, so thoughts. Harmony within opposition, looking at Scorpio's fixed water mode opposed to Taurus's fixed earth. So I was just talking about Taurus and Uranus, and this is really looking at Scorpio and Taurus. So Scorpio and Taurus are always opposite. Um, one you could think of on one side of the ecliptic of the zodiac and the other it's on the other. And right now we've got this new moon in Scorpio coming up. And then we've got this activity that's been strong in Taurus with Uranus there and, and really quite activated right now, in part because Uranus is also airing towards the late degrees of Taurus. Um, there will be a shift in 25 and Uranus will fully shift in 26 to Gemini, 2026 that is. So the modalities of these signs are cardinal, mutable, and fixed, and describe the element of the sign. As I mentioned earlier, modalities of signs are cardinal, mutable, and fixed. And these modes are the ways each group of signs shows up, responds, and navigates. And so we've got this exact opposite with the fixed water and the fixed earth. And what I'm struck by thinking wise is how 
opposites can positively attract in a happy way that is, and also how they really are two sides of the same coin. So this image is actually Lake Galena in Colorado. I was there with, um, I work for Outward Bound sometimes, and I was working for Outward Bound at this lake there. And it really shows with the image of the lake in the water, the land meeting the water, how water and earth, especially in a fixed fashion, really are two sides to the same coin in certain ways, even though our mind makes sense of them as opposites. So while we have oppositional energy, the potential of harmony is present at minimum in the metaphor. So Scorpio, to remind you, um, the fixed signs here are passionate, ambitious, desire for control, loyal and determined, ruled by Pluto, that great destroyer, the lord of the underworld, transformed via destruction, deep and creative, sexual, secretive. I'm noticing also I have a photo credit here. Um, I got this from a site called Unsplash, and you can't see the Unsplash because it's behind my picture. And um, for whatever reason, my cursor doesn't work um, when I've got this all set up this way. But at any rate, um, that picture, if for any reason you're just listening to this and not seeing the images, the picture is as if we're in a waterfall. We're sort of in the cave and the water is falling in front of us. And we can see the, the various plant life you know, sort of like the ferns and such that grow from the water falling, but we're looking out from the darkness to the light and which feels really Scorpio like me. It, it, it's this, this fixed area. It's a bit subterranean, the cave world looking out towards the airy world and that water dropping down and, and the depths and the, the beauty too of Scorpio. There's a real strong sort of soulful beauty that Scorpio has and it's fixed water energy. Okay. Moving forward, Taurus fixed earth qualities are sensual, grounded, stubborn, Steady, dependent, loyal, gentle, artistic, and ruled by Venus. Like Scorpio, there are more qualities than just these. These are the ones I chose. I have another picture here by Unsplash taken by Nicholas jo Johansson. And this is a picture I chose for the fixed earth element, but also to show this concept of the two sides of the same coin. So while water is distinctly a different element from earth. They are also so much the same. I mean, if you think of our planet as earth, but covered by so much water, our bodies as earthy and solid in appearance, but full and animated by so much water and truly relying on water for life. I love this picture. So it's a underwater camera that shows the water, but then also the surface tension on the top of the water, also the rock below the water surface, and then the rock above the water surface with a little sliver of sky. And, and the rock looks to me like a granitic rock, which if you've studied geology, you'll know is an igneous rock made from fire that cooled underneath the earth's surface. And then when erosion happened, it was uncovered. Granitic rock tends to be extremely solid, but water can actually wear it away over time. Okay, moving forward. So um, my, <laughs> my lab is here with me. She just made a really funny noise. Okay, so looking at the positive energy, remember, remember back to the Pazi vibes of the aster flower, especially in the rarefied air of altitude and mountains. So the benefit of polarity is magnetism. If you think about two poles, say on a battery, one is a positive, one is a negative, but those two poles 
create an engine sometimes that animates, that makes something go, that makes a battery work in a relationship, a positive and a negative may come together and create some wonderful magnetism between the two people in the relationship. So that's where we get opposites attracting. If you're familiar with the movement towards grounding, that was actually created by a man, Cliff Ober, I believe his name is, who was a cable guy. And he figured out that you bring together the positive and the negative in a house or with a cable network within a building and you ground everything. So you don't have as much static electricity or any static electricity. You have grounded, zeroed out energy, which is in our bodies, a wonderful health thing. Actually, it even helps mitigate inflammation and the like. So the integration of Taurus and Scorpio. So maybe you have a friend who's got a little bit more Taurus. You might have a little more Scorpio or vice versa in your makeup, but then the two of you get along really well. And maybe you're not married to one another, but you have a terrific stimulating ability to have conversations that help you both grow and the like. So considering the uses of adversity and how we learn from diversity, the value of boundaries within connection in relationships, and also alchemy's ability to create gold. So an alchemist could turn anything into gold. Um, they would put in a crucible cauldron type set setting, the hottest possible conditions to make a dross, which is kind of like the elements all mixed up together that would end up eventually creating gold, which is really the magic of opposites and, and um, perhaps apparently disparate materials coming together to make something that is powerful. All right, good stuff. So I want to close today just to let you know, I um, am a spiritual counselor and astrologer, and I give readings. You can find out about stuff on my website, and I have a Substack and a Patreon, and this will be published. Some of you might actually be accessing this through Substack or Patreon, and your support means the world to me. I super, super appreciate it. All right, all for now, yours and carrying the light. And thanks again for stopping by.